instead of Brother Gilbert coming down here, it should be like everybody is uh, going through some kind of a trial, some kind of a situation, whether it's physically or family or financially or mentally or emotionally or spiritually. Or everybody's going through something, aren't they? But Jesus is the master. You know, I hear different ones say, though, God is in control. And I believe that too. If I was uh, watching a little bit of the Weather Channel, and uh, on my way out, and they sw switched it to all those people out there on them beaches, you know, and I saw that big bat, that big mass ocean. I said, Lord, only you keeping that ocean at bay. You're in control of that ocean. Hallelujah. If you wasn't, it'll take all of this dry land in a moment's time. Amen. Swallow it all up. Amen. God's keeping that big ocean and that sea at bay, isn't he? Amen. That's right. One time he allowed it to, when it rained and it brought down that the flood in the days of Noah, a lot of people think that all of that just came from in the sky. But a lot of that water come from the ocean. God allowed the ocean, not only the waters in the sky, but he allowed the ocean to swallow up all the dry land, even the mountains. So, we're blessed. And he promised us he would not allow it the earth to be destroyed by water again. Didn't it? Yes, sir. And I was, we, we was driving in here, Brother Gilbert driving me down, we're coming in here, we seen a bunch of debris from trees just piled up everywhere. But it looks like uh, most of y'all hardships was the uh, not having electricity, not having the power when you needed it. When did most y'all get y'all power back on? Huh? Thursday. Thursday. Y'all should have called her. She would have talked to the Lord. Got y'all power back on Monday like that. The one that song. She said she got her back on Monday. <laughs> Amen. But well, that's good. I know y'all glad to, to, to get power restored back. Yes, sir. Now you see how crippled we are without the power of God. Without that spiritual uh, help from heaven. We need power from heaven, don't we? And we really need revivals. We need God to move for us. I'm just so thankful that God kept all of you. Uh, don't thank you about yourself. That storm come up through our way too. Sure did. We didn't get the um, we didn't lose the electricity like y'all did, but we got some pretty good strong winds up there too. I, I don't know how high the winds got. Maybe 60, 70. But I hear down here it got up to some spots 100 and 17 degrees. I mean 117 miles per hour. 110. 100 miles per hour. Is that right? It has to be. But man, I'll tell you, I ain't never in my life I heard Brother Moses say a lot of prayers. But I ain't never heard him pray like he prayed that night. I mean, he prayed. And I uh, prayed and and we stayed on that phone until that storm passed through here. That's right. We, 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 we was on that phone while it was on the way, and we stayed on that until it had passed through. I was watching it on the radar. And he didn't get off that phone until that storm passed through here. So, and I know some of y'all did the same thing. Amen. But y'all probably didn't pray like him. Well, Moses prayed, y'all. Well, huh? He prayed. But you know, it's going to take 
I've said that to say this. It's going to say that kind of the effectual and fervent prayer Amen. of the righteous availed much. It's going to take that kind of praying. The day that you search for me with all of your heart, he said, you will find me. And I believe it too. And what time of the night was that? Did that storm come through at 1 o'clock? I know it came through jumping around about 2 o'clock in the morning. Huh? About 12.15 when the electricity went out. Well, see, the scripture says, and uh, like a thief in the night. Did it? Like a thief in the night. Is what he said. And that was a sign to Tulsa. That was just a warning. That was just a wake-up call. That was not the main event of what's coming. And I remember the Lord spoke years ago. Well, how are you doing? Glad to see you. The Lord spoke years ago and said there was going to be a storm come through. It's going to ride the railroads, railroad tracks. It's going to be so bad until some of the tracks going to be picked up. Y'all remember that? I remember the Lord spoke about a storm coming through. But you're going to see body parts floating in the air everywhere. Jesus. I remember all these things. And these storms that are happening now, these are just friendly reminders of what's to come. But also there's going to be a spiritual storm that's going to uproot evil and knock the bottom out of hell and cause a lot of our family members to be brought in. It's going to be a shaking and not only in the natural but in the spiritual. This is what you, this is what you call a natural shaking. That storm, that, that was a storm back in 2020. At the end of 2019 when that COVID thing hit. Man, that was a storm. They was dying uh, at, up there in New York. Almost a, what, a thousand a day. What was it? At least. At least. At least. And I know um, millions died from that storm up there in New York. And I guarantee you, just about everybody in here, most of you, somewhere got touched by that COVID. You know, had some kind of a, effects from it. All the, there's hardly nobody that didn't get some kind of effects. And if you didn't, you're blessed. And even if you did, you got testimony that God brought you through it. People lost the sense of smell and, and uh, taste. Huh? And taste. Taste, yeah. And other things. But some people lost their lives. Some people have long term COVID effects. Some people are still suffering from that uh, outbreak of 2020. And Fausti, I was telling people, you know, when they thought Fausti was their hero was their savior. I was telling people way back then, y'all better keep your eyes on Fausti. You know, find out that it was, um, had something to do with their experience, uh, their, ex their experiments in China uh -huh. is what caused that thing to come out, to break out. The one that y'all think was your hero happened to be uh, one of the one of the main ones that was experimenting. What they want to experiment on stuff like that for? And it got out of hand. But anyway, I do thank God for keeping us. It could have been worse. Could have been much worse. But that was just a that little storm that come through here. That was just another little wake up call for us all. Another little wake up call. 
I was um, thinking about that scripture. How you doing, Brother Little? Good to see you. Feel like you come through a storm or something. Or you walk in. Feel like you've been through a storm. <laughs> well, we all have, Brother Little. And I was thinking about about that scripture over there in the book of I believe it's maybe over there in the book of Acts I think maybe verse 27 chapter 27 I mean I believe this would be appropriate to just talk on for a minute I'm not going to, this is not what I'm going to talk on but yeah, chapter 27, Acts 27, and verse 20. You know, Paul had warned the people that was fixing to get ready to sail. He warned them not to sail. He told them this is one journey that we should not take. I have been warned by the Lord that if we take this journey, there's a storm out there. And we might not make it through this storm. So please, but they listened to the uh, shipmaster instead of listening to Paul. That's, I'll tell you what, it won't hurt to read a little bit of this. And when neither sun nor stars. Now let's start at verse 20. Let's start at verse one. Read a little bit of that. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs. What, what verse is that? 21. No, verse 1. Verse. I'm sorry. Verse 1. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy and delivered Paul and the certain of other prisoners unto one name Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band, and entering into a ship of Idramitium, we launched, meaning to sail by coast of Asia. And one Aristarchus and Macedonian of Thessalonica being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed on the Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the winds sea... winds was contrary. In other words, God was trying to warn them then not to be making this journey. You ever been warned by God not to make decisions, but overrode it and made them anyway? And regretted that you made certain decisions. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And here was the Son of God being taken as a prisoner to um, eventually have his head cut off. But God wasn't quite through with him yet. And Let's read on down to verse 9. Read verse 9. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Paul was warning them, advising them, admonishing them. Uh-huh. And said unto them, Sirs. Sirs? I perceive that this voyage will be with her. There's something about this. There's some danger in this journey we're taking. There's something out there that we're not prepared for. Please listen to me. There's something. God said, he that have eyes, he that have ears, let him hear. But the Spirit is saying, well, that's what the Spirit is saying to us today. There's something out there that we're going to have to endure, we're going to have to encounter and go through. 
Go ahead. Will be with hurt and much damage. This storm is going to be with much hurt and much damage. What the world is fixing to go through now is going to bring forth a lot of hurt and a lot of damage. Uh huh. Not only with the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Not only the ship is going to lose very uh, precious uh, cargo. Not only is the ship going to be in danger, but our lives. Listen to me. Pray. Turn to God. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the whole arm of God. I perceive there's a storm out there. There's something coming. What you went through a week ago was just a wake-up call. But there's something more treacherous, dangerous times is upon us. Go ahead. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship. Centurion. Instead of believing, read verse 10 again. And said unto them, Sirs, Sirs I, perceive I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt. This voyage is going to be with hurt. There's, a, there's a something out there that's coming on America. Something out there. But well, look at how these cities right now. Look at how people can just walk in cities and just tear things. And just take what they want. And they are, and, and they are being instructed, don't you stop them. Let them do what they want to. And this uh, America is on the downhill, declining. It's in Los Angeles. It's in San Francisco. It's in Seattle. It's over there. I mean, all, all on that uh, west coast. I mean, that east coast. It's all over what these cities have been taken over by a certain uh, political party. What they've been saying, defund the police and all that stuff. Look at what's happened to America. Are people waking up? No, they got that on them beaches. God give us a little retrieve and look at how people ran back doing the same old things. After that storm, after that shaking that come through in 2020, and how that 8 to 10 million died from it, and how that all this uh, churches shut down, businesses shut down, schools shut down, kids failing in their shoes because of all of that. But is it waking folks up? Sirs, I perceive. There's something out there even greater than what we have gone through in the past four years. Something even greater is out there. But it's still, but the world, they're blinded. God of this world got them blinded. They can't see what we're about to encounter. What we're about to face. Thank God you've gone through what you've gone through. But you're going to have to get rooted down and get grounded and get settled and get a foundation and get something for your spiritual man. He's the one that's going to bring you through all of this that we're fixing to face. Get your spiritual man rooted, grounded, settled in faith, in the word. Go take it. Huh? So I'm reading a little bit of this about Paul, but at the same time, prophetically, Telling you that there's a, a something out there greater. Y'all remember reading all that in the book of Ephesians 6? After you've done everything you can do to stand, what did it say? Stand there for a while. Because there's something greater out there coming. After we've done everything we can do to stand through a storm and picked up the trees and picked up the limbs and got the electricity back on and got back comfortable, he said, brace yourself. Stand there for it. There's something out there worse, like a boomerang coming back on you. Let what you went through awaken you. Let what we're going through cause us to get deeper in God, deeper in the Word, get deeper in prayer, get a foundation, lay aside all these weights, all these hindrances. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 10. 
I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. Uh huh. Not only of the lading and ship. Yes. But also of our lives. Also of our lives. Uh huh. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master. Believed the master. And the owner of the ship. More than those things which were spoken by Paul. More than what was spoken by a man of God. People want to believe all these natural leaders and all these false prophets, even in the political arena. We're going to make things better. We're going to do this better and that better. And all these great political leaders in these big cities that are being turned over to drugs and to violence and chaos. People rather have that than to have the truth presented to them. That's why things are not getting better. That's why inflation is rising. And that's why we're seeing things deteriorate. I don't mean to be a damner, but I'm just letting you know, you know, this we're in the time that we moved in now, we're gonna have to really dig in and get something real. Three. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence, also if by any means that they might attain Venus and there to winter, which is a haven for Crete, and live toward the southwest and the northwest. And when the south wind blew, when the south wind blew softly, softly when everything is back. Softly, everything is okay now. Go ahead. Supposing that they had obtained their purpose. Oh, we got to do this. Party tonight. Celebration time. Come on. People think everything is quiet down. Everything is all right now. Loosening thence. Loosening thence. They sail close to Crete. Uh huh. But not long after. There, Listen, not long after there arose against it a, temp, a temptuous wind called Erechledon. Iraq, Here come another storm out of nowhere. We're driving, coming in here, and all the traffic on the road, and all the big trucks, and everything's going good. Well, thinking that everything is letting their hair down, everything relaxed, everything is all right now. He said, when they say, peace and safety, here come Cladosius. Here come another storm. Well, that's, we're in the day of the Lord now. When everybody calm down and think everything is all right, then another one, something else is fixing to happen. Brace yourself. Make sure that you're on a good, solid foundation. That's why we went through 40-some-odd days praying and just uh, concluded 40 some odd days of praying and seeking God because we knew that what was what came upon us is just the beginning of the end times. Did you know I was telling people yesterday that the birth of Jesus was ushered in the beginning of the last days. The birth of Jesus. Now we're in the um, end. We're in the very end. His, his birth Brought in the beginning of the last days. Amen. Now we're in the very end of the last days. Amen. Where everything that's written is fixed to be fulfilled. 75% yes. of what these prophets saw was for our day. Amen. That includes the uh, judgments and the great move that God is going to bring in these last days. Only 25% of pro prophecy concerning the coming of Christ was fulfilled back in Jesus' day. Under us the Son is born. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted. You know, God with us. 25%, but there's still 75% of the Bible is yet to be fulfilled in our day. Jesus ushered in the beginning of the end, but we're in the last days where we're going to usher in the end of all things. You're in the generation where everything that's written is now going to be fulfilled. That's why Paul said, put on the whole armor of God. That you might be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. After you've done everything to stand, 
Stand therefore. Have you done everything to pray and to be faithful and to serve God and to lay aside weights and sin? He said, stay faithful. Don't waver. Don't slack. Don't give up because cyclists, another one is coming. Another one is at the heels of the world in America. That's what he's trying to tell us here. Go ahead. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, uh -huh. we let her drive. We let her drive. And running under the, a certain island, which is called Cla Clauda, yes, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest that they should fall into the quicksands, struck sail, and so were driven. And we be, being exceedingly tossed with tempests, the next day the, they lightened the ship. Next day they got rid of all the weights. We thought we were afraid we were going to be totally killed, lost, like those four men that was on that Titanic. Their bodies is down there, three miles under the ocean. Don't worry about where that Titanic went. Man, billionaire, all his billions couldn't bring him out, couldn't deliver him. And the son didn't want to go, but was, you know, went on with him. And, and all these others that all their money couldn't rescue them. All the ships, submarines and everything else, airplanes and radars, nothing could rescue them. Well, see, that's what fiction to happen. We're headed toward another Titanic. We're headed toward something that much silver and gold ain't going to deliver us. Ain't going to be but one thing that's going to deliver us. And that's exactly what we're fixing to read here. Read on. And the third day we cast out with our own hands uh -huh. the tackling of the ship. See, the left side weights and the sin that so easily beset us. Looking under Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Lay aside all these excuses why we don't pray, why we don't read the Bible every day, why we're not doing this and doing. Lay aside all these things, he said. You mean y'all brought me that, that offering to hear this? Y'all brought me that where y'all can hear this kind of word? Y'all didn't want to hear this. Y'all want to hear something pick you up. Huh? But this kind of word. God is directing it. Because the time we're living in right now, we're driving in here, and I felt a warning coming in here. Driving in here, and I felt the thief that came through here in the midnight hour. You know, a, a, a week ago was just a warning to America, I mean to Tulsa, a wake-up call. I heard y'all had a couple of tornadoes hit through here too. Just missed you. Hit just a, a few miles northeast of here. Could have been much worse, couldn't it? Could have been that some of them storms Brother Charles saw back in the 80s. That he saw Tulsa being level. But thank God, we got a lot to be thankful for. We've gone through some storms. Natural and spiritual storms. And this is what they're in now. They're in a storm and Paul is warning them there's some danger out there. There's some things we're fixing to have to go through. Uh-huh. And when neither sun nor stars when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us no small... Man, I tell you boy, that's... I, I wonder how did those people feel trapped in the bottom of the ocean. And it's so far down, can't have no sunlight down there. No light at all. Cold. Being tossed. I can imagine how Jonah felt when a big fish was preparing for him. Took him to the bottom of the ocean. And Jonah got a hold of God, didn't he? He grabbed hold of some of that big fish. He grabbed hold of that, that fish intestines. And he cried out out. And he got a hold of God. In the bottom of the ocean. 
I wonder, did they even think to call on the name of Jesus? Or did they, anybody talk to them about Jesus? Lost that sea. Everybody was thinking about him, talking about him. It was all on the news. What? Friday. Yesterday. Man, today you probably ain't going to hear much about it. Tomorrow it'd be, it'd be like the Titanic, thing of the past. But can you imagine? I said that Brother Gilbert about the uh, black hole. The theories about the black hole. How many of y'all heard about the black hole? Man. I said to Brother Gilbert that someone was saying that at the end of this universe, the scientists are saying there's a black hole. And how that whole planet are being sucked into this black hole. That's the way hell is. Hell is a bottomless pit. Well, you're constantly, you know, going down, going down. And darkness, pitch black darkness. Don't feel nothing. And some people, people that die in hell, they don't even, they don't even know to call on God because ain't no God nowhere to be found down there. So calling on God don't even come to their mind because God is so far from it. Hell. And it's so black. And it's so pitch black, you can't see what's coming at you. But you can feel it. You feel it. And the fear. And the hopelessness. Jesus. No chance of ever getting back to God. And the stink and the smell is so awful down there. And nobody, you can, you hear voices, but they're screaming. And the voices of terror, horror, no chance at all of ever getting something to relieve them, not even for a minute, not even for a few seconds. Ain't that sad? Man, there's a storm out there and it's taking people to hell. It's, people are being suck into that black hole of lust, of uncleanness, of perversion, of greed, of hate, of unforgiveness, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. They're being sucked into all of this and, and they're not knowing what's happening, but they're being like a magnet. Something is pulling them in darker into that's what I'm seeing after uh, this thing that hit. I'm seeing people going right back into the vomit, right back into the hog pen, right back into the filth. Until God's going to say one day, he that is filthy, let him stay filthy. I'm not, my spirit ain't going to deal with him no more. If they want to go to hell, let them go to hell. He that is holy, he better hold on to what he's got. And not backslide. Because that's what's going to save it. That's what's going to preserve it. Go ahead and read that again. And the third day we. Uh, and neither there was sun nor stars. And there was sun nor stars. In many days. Many, see, here. You're going to have to learn to walk by faith. When you can't see your way. When you can't feel your way. You got to learn. How to get a hold to some kind of faith. That help you. You know, you're walking by faith and not by sight. That's what Job said. I looked to the left, there was nobody to help me. I looked to the right, there was nobody to help me. I always got help when I looked straight ahead. There was nobody to help me. And everywhere I looked, no help. But I'm going to trust him. I'm going to, if he slay me, I'm still going to trust him. There's got to come a faith in us that cannot be shaken. We've got to enter into a place in God where we are rooted, where we are grounded, and we're settled in the Word, in faith, in prayer. And let nothing move you from the hope. Things that are seen, if we just go by what we see, we of all men are most miserable. But if we walk not by faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Thank God God put a faith in you where the victory, faith is the victory that's going to overcome the world. 
God put a seed in you through his word and that word has created a faith in you and that faith if you let it grow if you pray in the Holy Ghost if you nurture it if you get the weeds out of your life get the lust out and let that seed germinate and let it grow in you then God would get, cause that mustard seed to become a mountain where nothing would shake you where nothing would move you and you'll say like Job don't enslave it yet I'm going to trust it I know that my Redeemer liveth, for he shall stand in the last days. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get something from God that mama can't take away from you, that daddy can't discourage you. Get something that when you don't, everything is going to be shaken in the time we're living in. But make sure you own something that can't be shook. What do you mean? Upon this rock. Jesus said, I build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail. Get on something that hell can't shake. Get on something that the gates of hell can't prevail. What you talking about? What kind of rock? Well, the word, my word that I send you. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will not pass away. Jesus. Get in the word. Get Establish, get, found, get that the word be your foundation. Amen. Huh? Go ahead, read a little bit more. And no small tempest lay on us. No small tempest lay on us, the winds of adversity. Everywhere you look, people are being blown, they're being shaken. Don't let it. Go ahead. And all hope. And all hope. That we should be saved. That we should be saved. Was then taken away. Was taken all hope. Was taken away. Give it up. Don't you give up on God. I don't care what come your way. Don't you give up. Don't you abandon what God's put in you. Go ahead. But after long abstinence. But after long abstinence. Paul stood forth in the midst of them. Paul stood up in the midst of them. And said, sirs. Said, sirs. You should have hearkened unto me. You should have listened to me. And have not loosed from Crete. And not got off this foundation. Not loose from Crete. Not allow others to give you something that tickled the ears. Give you something that's got you, you know, in sinking sand. Quick sand. He that hear these sayings of mine and do with them, I liken him to a wise man. Build his house on the rock when the winds came and blew and the floods beat against that house. It didn't fall because it was built on obeying the word, being doers of the word. Not just a hearer, but doing it, practicing it. Don't just hear pray, but get on your knees and pray. Don't just hear living right, but live right. Don't just hear about things the scripture says do, but do them, practice them. Go ahead. And to have gained this harm and loss. To have gained this harm, and, this harm and loss. And now I exhort you. Now I exhort you. To be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. There shall be the loss of no man. Nobody among you going to lose their life. But of the ship. But of the ship. For there by me did this night the angel of the Lord. That stood by me this night. The angel of the Lord. Whose I am. Whom I am. And whom I serve. Whom I serve. See, one, you got an angel that, that follows you. You may not know it. But then one, you got an angel to protect you. Though you walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. You have an angel. You may, some of you have known good and well, you shouldn't have come through things you've come through. You've been close to accidents. You, the devil, tried to take you out of here a number of times. But God has kept you. Yes. An angel, some kind of way, has preserved your life and kept you. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Go ahead. Saying, fear not, Paul. Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. Uh-huh. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. God's given you all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, uh -huh. be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. Be of good cheer. I believe God. 
And this shall be. I believe God. I believe God. If God says pray, then we need to be doing some more praying. If God tells us to draw closer to Him, we need to be drawing closer to Him. I believe God. If He tells us to come out from among them and be separated and touch not, taste not, hell not. I believe we need to touch not, taste not, hell not. I believe God, if he tells us what it's going to take to stand, we need to listen to him. He that hears these sayings of mine and does them, he's like a wise man. Build his house up on a rock. And when all this hell breaks loose, thank God, you're making it. You're surviving it. Peter, that's what Jesus said. He said, he that hear this word and do them, I like him to a man that's built his house up on a rock. Who do men say that I am? Some say you're John. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're Elijah. Who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gate, upon what rock? Upon man? No. Upon the revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ in you. The hope of God. That's your hope. That's your survival. That's the way you're going to make it. Christ living in you. Abiding in him. And his word abiding in you. This is the connection. He is the vine. We are the branches. And we abide in him. His love. His spirit. His life. His word abide in us. His virtue abide in us. It'll keep us in these storms. It'll keep us in these pandemics. It'll keep us through all this turmoil that the world is fixing to go through. I perceive there's something coming out there. And we need to be ready. And we need to be prepared. And we need to lay aside all of these excuses and waste and get it in and get something so God can keep us. I don't mean to go this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read what verse was it? For I believe God that it shall be what, even what verse verse was it? 25. Read verse 24 again. Saying, Fear not, Paul. Uh-huh. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them. That sail with thee. God's giving you everybody that sail with you. You're finna go through a hurt, through a storm, but you're gonna make it. Jesus told the disciples, let's go to the other side. Didn't he? And when Jesus went to the bottom of the ship and he went to sleep, uh, came a storm, and the storm was there to ravish and to kill them all. While Jesus was asleep, the devil said, I'm going to get him. You know, the devil has got power in these storms, too. And that storm was fixing to take him on while Jesus was asleep. But somebody said, wake up, the master. Jesus woke up, and he spoke to the winds and to the storm. Peace. Be still. And everything become calm. And before you know it, they was right there, picked up, and brought to the shore. Hallelujah. God had mercy. Because they had it in the ship with them. If you got the word in you, if you got the spirit in you, you got God's love in your, you got God's power, you got something in you to protect you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Even though it looks like all hope that you're going to be saved is taken away. You got to hold to faith. You're not looking at what you can see with your eyes, what you can hear, or what you can touch or taste or feel. You're looking at what the Word says. He sent His Word to heal. He sent His Word to deliver. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the Word. The Word says we're going to make it. The Word says if you be faithful. The Word says stay in here, and you're going to get through these times that you're going through right now. I don't care how dark it looks. I don't care how the devil trying to rock your faith and shake you. You're going to make it. Looking not at the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen, which is eternal, which is the word of God. That's what's going to keep you. That's what's going to preserve you. That's what's going to take you through all of these things. We're fixing to go through. I perceive there's a storm, but we're whole faithful. We're going to make it to the other side. We're going to make it to the other side. We're going to make it to the other side. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
Somebody got the word back to Paul and said, Paul, they're finna kill all of us prisoners because they're afraid we're going to escape. They're finna kill us. And Paul said, and they were finna abandon the ship and uh, let it go. But God spoke to Paul and said, tell them, except these abide in the ship, they'll not be saved. Except we abide in faith. Except we abide in the word of God. Except we abide in prayer. Except we abide in holiness. 
except we abide in all that is written according to the word, we're not going to be saved. If we're going to be saved, it's because we stayed in the ship. We abided in obedience to God. We, we, we've done that which God told us to do. We didn't compromise. We didn't backslide. We didn't take down. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Finish reading that. Verse, start at verse 26. How be it? How be it? We must be cast upon a certain island. Uh huh. But when the 14th night was come, 14th night was come, as they were driven up and down, yes, Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Uh huh. And sounded, and found it twenty fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and they found it fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, yeah, yeah, verse thirty. As the ship was about to flee out of the ship. When they had let down the boat into the sea. When they let down the boat into the sea. Under color as though they were have cast anchors out of the foreship. Uh-huh. Paul said to the centurion. Paul said, I know what y'all finna do. You've been abandoning ship. And your man's been run for his life. He said, if you do, you're gonna be lost. If you abandon the faith, if we abandon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ, if we abandon the word of God, we'll be lost in this storm that's coming on the world, that's coming on America, that's coming on uh, Oklahoma, that's coming in your household. Everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken in this storm of the end. But those that are on this rock, I'm going to build my church on it, and the gates of hell ain't going to prevail against them. You that are striving, living, abiding in him, his word abiding in you, he's going to keep you. He's going to heal you. He's going to protect you. He's going to save your family and your loved ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Go ahead. And Paul said to the centurion. Paul said to the centurion. And to the soldiers. Soldiers. Except these abide in the ship. Except you abide in the ship. You cannot be saved. You cannot be saved. Did you hear that? Except we abide in the ship. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat. Yes. And let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried, and continued fasting, and have taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not an hair Look at fall. There shall not a, because you abide in the word, there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when thus had spoken, when he had spoke thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. Hallelujah. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. Uh -huh. And when we were all in the ship, two hundred three score and sixteen souls, and when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore. And that something two hundred and seventy-six lost that sea, driven by the wind, for uh, fourteen days and nights, neither sun nor stars, and the mercy of the Almighty. But they come out with a testimony. They come, they made it to the other side. How many of you want to make it to the other side? Want to make it through what you're going through right now? Huh? Don't you want to make it through your storms? Don't you want to make it through what you're going through right now? 
be slain. We're going to make it if we don't compromise. If we don't slack up in our Bible, praying and reading, giving about offering and tithes and proving God and rebuking and devour. We're going to make it as long as we don't abandon the Word of God. Huh? As long as we don't abandon the Word of God, we'll survive all of this that's coming on America, coming on the world. I ain't mean to go this way. Lord. But when I got up here and this inspiration just hit me. Yes. And the Lord let us know this is what he wants us to hear. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is what he wants us to hear. And like I was telling you, we was coming in here. And uh, that, was, that was just a warning. Y'all got some of the winds too. Well, y'all stayed, didn't you? That was a warning. That was a warning for this whole area. That a couple of hundred miles of 300, two or 300, that was a warning. But what are people doing afterwards? Eating, drinking, going about, ain't nothing wrong with eating and drinking, but forgetting God. All right. Going back doing the same things that brought these things upon us. Instead of trying to get in church somewhere. At least I we was coming in and uh, I found one church. Thank you. I don't know if it was a Baptist church. But boy, I tell you, the parking lot was full. Was full. I said, that's somebody to woke up, Brother Gibbon. Yes, sir. And I said, that's somebody you know, recognize that God's mercy kept them. Jesus. I know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. I've been through a storm. 2008, where it wiped out people all around us. Been through a storm in 2011, yes, sir. where uh, killed a thousand people and a uh, hundred people, I think. How many was it? I think it was a thousand, but they didn't get everybody counted. Killed over a thousand, still didn't finish counting them all. And Flattened Joplin. Been through, a lot of y'all have been through certain kinds of uh, tragedies and certain kinds of storms and events. But it's prayer. Humbling ourselves. And I know God is speaking not only to us, but some of the people that's listening online. God is warning us. That we better lay aside every weight and the sin that beset us. Something is coming. But you know, on the bright side of it, those that do, they're going to have revival. Did you know in the middle of all this that's coming, that's going to be the greatest revival? Dead raising, sick healing. Uh, people are going to have the very faith of Jesus. You know what that is? The faith is an unspoken, I mean, it's an unshakable faith. God's going to put an unshakable faith in a people in these last days. A creative faith. What you talking about, a creative faith? They didn't have no way to pay the bills. And Jesus told one man to go fishing. Don't worry about stopping and getting on bait. Just throw an empty hook out there. And the man throw the empty hook out there. And and, it, the, and and the fish, good fish too. One of them good eating, not a catfish. One, <laughs> that's right. One of them good fish got it. And Jesus said, "Look at this mouth, and it'll be enough gold in that fish mouth, piece of corn, to pay all of your taxes." He did. See, it was created. That's the faith of Jesus speaking something into existence. When when you came by. When you can't sail, God's going to speak. I remember Brother John saw a vision that people sitting at an empty table. While it was at this empty table, everybody bowed their head and prayed. There wasn't no food, nothing there. When they prayed and, and they thanked God for the food, and when they opened up their eyes, they had a, 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 a dish right before them. Everything that they needed to survive was right there. 
He said, God showed him that's what's going to happen in these last days. When you can't buy, when you can't sell, God's going to give you a creative miracle. Somebody said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, Brother Blue, that's just one. Well, I can give you another one. Remember when they couldn't, they, didn't, they ran out of wine? He said, go to, and, and get, uh, fill up the jugs, and they filled the jugs up. And when they filled the jugs up, he said, Jesus said, that draw and give to the governor of the feast. And the water was turned to wine. See, that was another creative miracle. And if that ain't enough, I'll give you a third one. When there was thousands of people, had they nothing, three days out there caught up with miracles, caught up with listening to Jesus. And they said, Lord, let's send them home. Let's say, faint. Jesus said, have you anything, any meat? One boy had two fish. I mean, had yeah, two fish, five loaves of bread. And Jesus said, give. And they gave. And 5,000 men beside women and children. Probably 20,000 out there. Over two fish and five loaves. God multiplied. That was the faith of Jesus. We're going to make it. The, the saints is going to get through these times. The just is going to live by their faith. This is the victory that's going to overcome the false prophets, the beast, the antichrist, the faith of the saints. And what God give us is going to sustain us. So I'm not just giving you the bad side. Now I'm giving you the good side. We're going to make it. Father, we thank you. Help us. In these times that we are living in. To take a hold to your word. Let faith be created in our hearts. Those that are listening online, God. Touch their homes. Touch their lives. Touch their churches. Touch their bodies. Drive back the enemy, Lord. Lift up a standard. You said when the enemy comes in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. Let your spirit... Lift up a standard against the enemy in these days that we're living in. In Jesus' precious name, thank you for your word today. Thank you for speaking about revelation to us and by prophetic utterance. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen.